So you're going to be swaging now, all right? And this is in prep for soldering and brazing and really how we do our connections. Now, the flaring connections I showed you for the first project, all right, was just practice. And then you did the multiple sizes with the flare tree. And then you did the filter dryer, which showed that you had to have it a good flare to hold under pressure. And we use in refrigeration a lot of flares, but most of our HVAC work, the heating and air conditioning work that we do for residential stuff and some commercial, doesn't use a lot of flaring, all right? Unless they're the mini split systems that hang on the wall, the ductless. They kind of use it for the residential equipment. But most of the standard package units, indoor, outdoor equipment, all that's going to be connected up with already a pre swage joint for you on the service valve. But you might have to connect a couple pieces together all right, when you make a bend or when you connect to the indoor and the outdoor unit. And we don't, we don't want two connections. We want as, as few connections as we can have. We want as little connections as possible. Why? If I had a lot of connections like this, what do we have a chance of happening? A lot more leaks, yes. We get a lot more leaks. So we can reduce the number of leaks uh, by maybe reducing the number of connections that we need. Not only that, but you're going to give a handout. You're going to get a handout on flaring. The flare nuts. When I'm making a connection with two flare nuts in a union, it involves about six, seven, eight dollars worth of parts. Each flare nut's about two dollars, and then the union's another couple bucks for the brass. And when you add all that stuff up, plus the time it takes to make the two flares, you know, we're getting up into some money now, whereas a swage joint doesn't require any extra material whatsoever. But it does require some tools, and I'm gonna show you two different ways to make swage joints. One's just gonna be today, using these tools here called punches, and now you'll need to get also, if you notice in the right hand side of the locker, there's these ball peen hammers. Ball peen. We use it because it's got this ball on the one side that acts like a weight. And they come in sizes usually like 8, 16, 32 ounce. Okay, so they're measured in ounces and depending on the weight of the ball, alright, or the head of the hammer determines the size of the hammer that we're going to use. And this one here is just a standard 16 ounce ball peen hammer. Okay, and that's all we're going to use here for that. But there are some in the toolbox that get bigger for bigger work, for more stuff. We're not going to use the round ball side. We can use that in a couple different areas later, but right now we're just going to use the front head, the flat face, okay, of the head. Now, check it over. Safety for tool safety, that's something you got to do on your own. If the head's loose on the shaft or the handle, then we need to, there's a little wedge that goes in the center that we need to tighten up. Some people just like to do this. Bang it on it, that's not the right way to do it, okay? Because it does jam it down in this the fatter part of the, the, the top of the handle, but on the shaft, but it's not really doing it the right way. It's supposed to spread out. You can kind of see in this one, there's a little nail in the top of that, a little uh, spike uh, or the shiv, we call it a bunch of different things, all right? But it's uh, it's just a wedge, really. It's what, like a pie-shaped wedge that stretches out the, the, the face of the handle, from, uh, the head of the handle. To under the under the top of the head. All right, so that's that. So I gave you the handout. The handout's going to show you. You're going to be practicing with first your quarter inch pieces. So you got to keep these. You'll need to slice off the flare using the split root roller. And because it's quarter inch, it's going to be hard to hold. So I would advise using the block to hold it. So just put it in the block. You don't even need to tighten it up. And then just slice the flare off, sort of like what you did back in that first project. And then we're going to use a different deburring tool to ream this one out because I don't need to be as uh, conscientious about the deburring with the swage as I did for the flare. Flare, you, you had to be critical about deburring. Uh, you didn't want to cone it out. But this one here, see I can't fit the swage punch. And again, there's a quarter inch swage matching up all the measurements you've been learning. Three eighths inch swage, half inch and in, uh, five eighths. That's about as far as we're going. Five eighths. So there's some three quarter inch pipe lying around. We're not going to do that. You're going to do the five eighths. And then you notice this. Look at that. This telescope's in. So the five eighths fits inside the three quarter. Okay. And then I can fit a piece of half inch in the five eighths and three eighths and quarter and eight, just like the flare tree. They all telescope. That's what that's called, telescoping. So you get your piece cut, and it tells you place the quarter inch. That's this copper tubing in the flare box, so it extends up the flare for a distance slightly more than the length of the swage shoulder. Now this is the shoulder right here, but we can also use the tip, the front part, all the way up to where the bevel starts. So there's going to be a bevel or a chamfer, same thing, I can interchange those words as well, but that's at 45 degree, almost like a flare, but it's going the other way, it's, it's spreading out. All right, And we're going to go to the top right there, where my finger is, that's the shoulder. This is what I'm going to use as my height gauge. 
I could also use the distance between where the octagon part of the handle for the swage is on this part of the shoulder right here, uh, but that's hard to do to line up. That's a little harder to line up. So again, you're going to have to side with the bevel. So most of the time you should be looking at the numbers on this flare block and then you just line it up right there like that. So you line it up right there like that. You see that? All right. And that's the height. Now look, because I did the cut real quick, my, my, my swage punch won't fit inside. Now I might be able to get to, you know, hold it like this and get to the handle and knock it in, but you could use the deburn tool as well, but I want you to try using this reamer blade. So I'm gonna put this in, and this has gotta be tight, so I'm gonna lock it in as tight as I can, because I'm gonna, it's more than the flare. It's more pressure on this pipe than the flare. So it also might need to be cleaned where we clean it out with a wire brush. But I'm gonna just use this reamer blade all right, and it's gonna shove in there like that, and I'm just gonna run it around one time. Now, the reason we don't use this for flaring is because it narrows out the wall of the tube, and usually we gotta scrape the top to get it flat for the flare again. But because it's a swage, it, I just have to ream it out so that fits inside. Now, for this part here, you gotta kinda hold it steady with one thumb and hold the block, and maybe put the pipe between a couple fingers like that. So, everybody do that thing, do that thing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's almost like that. But look, just to do that, and then you kind of fold it over like that. And you don't want to get the meat between your thumb and your pointer finger anywhere near where these two pieces connect up. Because what could happen here is if a little piece of skin gets stuck in there, and you're holding it like this, and you smack down, you could nick a little piece of this skin out right here like that. And it'll heal. It'll be fine. But you got to report it to the instructor like all accidents. Get you a Band-Aid, a little bit of antibiotic wash, antiseptic wash. And that's it, you're good. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hold this. That's why I kind of put it up there against the, the thumb and hold it. And then I take the, notice how I don't hold that. That doesn't have any momentum or any leverage or any weight to the head. I've just taken it all off. When I hold the handle where it's supposed to be held down at the bottom, that's gonna give me the weight that I need with a ball peen hammer to impact the swage punch to push it in. And it's just like a flare. It's gonna stretch out the pipe. That's what a swage is. We're enlarging one piece of pipe so that another piece of pipe the same size can fit within it. That's a swage definition. That was one of your words of the day, too. So I'm gonna tap it. I am not hitting really hard. It's almost like Happy Gilmore. Anybody see Happy Gilmore? It's an old, old, old movie now with Adam Sandler. You're gonna like he did with the putt-putt. Anybody remember when they put it in, what would he say? Well, how would he put it? Would he, would he wag it hard or what would he do? What'd he say? Happy place. Happy place, yeah, okay, happy place. But what'd he say, remember? You got it in. Tap, 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 tap it in. You remember that? Did you see the movie? Happy Gilmore? Watch it on Netflix later. It's all good. It's a good movie. It's pretty good. One of the better ones. Tap, tap, tap. You know who Bob Barker is? Price is Right? He whips his butt in that movie. He, and actually, Bob Barker, I think, took him. So that's tapping it in. Tap, tap, tap it in. And you notice I'm only going to do three, and then I'm going to rotate it around, and I'm going to three or four. That's okay. I kind of went over a little on that one, but I'm not doing more than three or four. And I just rotate it around. Why do you think I'm rotating it around like that? What happens if I just do one side over? What would happen? It would be uneven. Yeah, it's just like common sense right there, right? After you get it in, you don't even need to hold it anymore, the, the tool. But I'm just going to stabilize it with that. Oh, I kind of went over on that one a little bit. I'll show you one when I just do it one way. All right? But I'm just keep rotating it around. And then eventually, you hear the tone change in that tool? Right? It was, it was like a lighter tone, and then it went deep. Like that, that's done. It's bottomed out. We bottomed out the swage. I can't, I can't, I don't see any more bevel. All right, and that's it. And then if you can't twist this with your hand, what other tool could I get to twist this off? Because a lot of people want to bang it to the side, but what you're doing is now you're making that round swage sort of like an oval. And when you solder a braze, you got to fill more of the gap with the solder, which could be another chance for a leak. So don't, if it gets stuck, don't hit it with a hammer and try and bang it out. Get a wrench, put the wrench around. That's why this uh, swage is angled like that with a hexagon, so that you can just twist it with a wrench. Now this one I can do with my hand and pull out. Another thing is, might be too tight between the block, you might have to loosen it up. That's another problem that you might encounter when trying to get it apart, okay? But you can just loosen it up a little bit. But that's a swage right there, that's it, boom. So now that I can take one piece and another piece, the same size, and it fits within there. Now whatever size the pipe is, that should be the, the, the width of the swage. 
So it equals again, sort of like a flare. We got quarter inch, we got a quarter inch for the swage. Which means if I'm doing a measurement on this end, I need to add a quarter inch because it's gonna fit within the other swage and I'll lose it because it fits in. So if I measure this four inches and then I shove it in and you're supposed to have four inches from the edge of the swage to the edge of the other piece, you're gonna be off by a quarter inch because you didn't add that quarter inch to fit within the side of the swage. And then you're just gonna move on. You should have a stick of about five of one piece done. And then I'm gonna give you another tool called an expander. That's a yellow jacket tool. Uh, there's a couple other companies that make one too, Helmar and a few others. Uh, but we have the yellow jacket version and you're gonna use that as well. That's not gonna use a hammer or anything. That uses another tool and it's a lot quicker, but you're gonna practice with this. So this tells you that you gotta do five that are quarter inch, five that are three eighths in size, and then another five that are half inch in size. So that's what we've just done. We've inserted the swaging tool, we did the ham. You gotta make sure that you observe the swaging tools aligned with the tubing at all times. That's why I kinda did that. Tap it squarely with the hammer. If the tool becomes slanted or out of line, you gotta adjust it and it'll make for a bad joint. The joint becomes lopsided, so you gotta adjust it or redo it. Cut it and do it again, okay? Check, make, check, and you notice I check frequently and I kept turning and turning so it wouldn't work to one side. And then let me look at the instructor. Uh, let me look at the uh, tool, give it to the instructor. Uh, let me look at the swage when you're done on all of them. Now you're not gonna do 5 8 tubing. I'm gonna save that for the brazing stuff. The first three is all that you're gonna use, the quarter, the 3 8 and a half. And it tells you what materials you need, swaging. All right, swaging. And then we're gonna answer these five questions. I wanna talk to you a little bit about why swaging's better than the other types of connections we used. Uh, and then what's the disadvantage of this between a flare and a swage joint? And then what happens if the swaging tool struck too t hard with a hammer? Uh, and then we're gonna talk about the fittings and the cost of this, the, the difference between flaring and swaging. So again, check your tools. I'm noticing also that the tubing cutter wheels are falling out with the screw. You need to let me know right away when that happens. If you pick up a tool that's broken or missing, we can fix it, but I need the wheel. And I have extra wheels, but the screw is really what I need to fit it back in. And then when you're cutting, remember, keep this reamer blade down like that until you're ready to use it. You're gonna use the reamer blade now for swaging. Any questions about any of that? All right.